commercial television has introduced Americans to a wide variety of characters over its three-quarter century history. Within that same time span, Americans have been witness to the civil rights struggles by African Americans, often through the same television medium. Just as the struggle of African Americans was depicted on television through the 40s, 50s, and 60s, so too were the harmful depictions of blacks and other minority communities as varying stereotypical archetypes beamed through the television sets of consumers nationwide. These were images from shows such as Amos and Andy, the first show ever to feature an all-black cast starring two black males portraying exceedingly inept characters, unable to function in society constructively. All in life, don't want you to see nothing. Amos and Andy came from the mind of two white men, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell, who initially created a radio broadcast about a couple of colored characters. Amos and Andy was removed from the air in 1953 due to intense pressure from civil rights groups. Images like these permeated through the homes of thousands and eventually millions, bombarding adults and children alike with negative and unrealistic portrayals of minority communities perpetuating negative stereotypes that would be reinforced with regularly scheduled programming. Travis Dixon, an assistant professor at the University of Michigan, wrote about the four stereotypes of African Americans in early television. The Mammy. The Mammy represented a good, wholesome caretaker of whites, but a mean and insensitive presence in her own family life. The Coon. The coon represented black ineptness at living successfully in white society. The Tom. Stemming from the term Uncle Tom, the Tom was an apologist for slavery and constantly endearing themselves to whites. And the Buck. The Buck represented the violent and uncontrollable black male. Other scholars have included an additional figure relevant to these stereotypical images, the Jezebel an innately promiscuous black female, so hypersexualized, she could even be portrayed as a predator. Today, the faces of ethnic minorities on television are more abundant than ever. But have the stereotypical images changed? Many say that the sexualized image of the helpful mammy is only a satirical image today, yet the asexual black female is embodied by Dr. Miranda Bailey on Grey's Anatomy. While the other female characters of Grey's Anatomy display their sexuality and engage in active relationships, Dr. Bailey rarely leaves the hospital to tend to her own child, instead acting as a support for the other cast members. In the show Desperate Housewives, Betty Applewhite is the lone black female among five salacious housewives originally depicted. Similar to Dr. Miranda Bailey, Applewhite is also the only female character who is completely void of sexuality and instead serves as a supporting plotline as the aggressive, violent black female character from inner city Chicago who has invaded the story's whitewashed suburb. Applewhite and her African American sons play out various themes involving murder, rape, assault, and abduction. The Jezebel is also a prevalent image of the black female in contemporary television programming. This promiscuous and sexually aggressive character appears frequently in reality television programming like Flavor of Love, in which the black females are always portrayed as the loudest, most sexual, most aggressive individuals in the program. Though hypersexual white females are apparent as well, they are depicted as more submissive and often frightened by the aggressive nature of the African American women. The time is often a contemporary source of comedic ridicule, frowning negatively upon African-American men who do not engage in what is seen as traditionally black culture. As Carlton from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air did not engage in the same values as the lead, Will Smith, he instantly becomes the most identifiable image of the time in contemporary television. Interestingly, this character is satirized in Aaron Magruder's comic and television series, The Boondocks, by a man named Tom, who was married to a white woman, an excellent fashion traditionally assigned to the Tom character. The Coon, once the single most prevalent derogatory image of black males in American culture, is still used today in television by both producers using the Coon image as satire, 
but also by producers and characters alike, attempting to depict real black males who engage in buffoonish antics characteristic of the coon image. Once again, reality television propagates this image freely. Even more prevalent today than the coon image, and far more dangerous, is the image of the buck, the violent and uncontrollable black male. This is unequivocally the most pervading image of black men on television today, whether it's reality television, news broadcasts, fictional series, or even cartoons. The buck image is particularly harmful because it perpetuates the well-known stereotype that black males are prone to violence. And coupled with the prison statistics for black males, whose incarceration rates trump those of white males several fold, what Americans are seeing on television becomes true in real life. Though proven highly profitable, given its market success and relative low production cost, Reality television has enjoyed the most rapid increase in popularity and saturation since MTV's The Real World. Subsequently, reality television has been adopted by broadcast networks like ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. However, despite the name reality television, these programs do not depict reality. Instead, they are manipulated, managed, and produced situations edited vigorously so that anywhere from 24 hours to several days can occupy a 30-minute space with commercial breaks. Only the most extravagant and outrageous behavior makes it past the editing room, and at that, only the clips in the interests of the producers will ultimately be seen by television consumers. As it grows in popularity, reality television has the potential to be the most dangerous of television programming in propagating negative stereotypes because of its label as depicting reality. Consumers who do not realize consciously or subconsciously that the images that they are being fed are highly manipulated become convinced that the characters in reality programs are representative of real people and in the case of ethnic minorities that they represent groups of ethnic minorities. This is also true for television news broadcasts, which have been statistically shown to overwhelmingly focus on African Americans and Latinos as perpetrators of crimes. News broadcasts differ from reality television in that they are often not as manipulated to the point of outright changing stories completely. However, the manipulation in news media is in the selection of which stories are aired and how criminals are depicted. It was Monday night, 10.45 p.m. The criminal comes into the Grand Prairie McDonald's and is picked up on videotape. Look at him, closely. He's a crook and a cowardly one, too. Unsurprisingly, African Americans are also overwhelmingly depicted as the nation's poor. While African Americans make up only 29% of the nation's poor, they constitute 65% of the images of the poor on leading network news programs. This combined with the steady trend in criminal representation paints a broad picture of African Americans through the coon and the buck images, poor and uneducated people disposed to violence and criminal activity. The positive depiction of blacks doing positive things in their communities through uplifting stories often afforded to the white community is far disproportionate to negative stories. The two dominant forms of genre television are situational comedies and television dramas. Shows featuring ethnic minority casts playing positive lead roles have mostly been ousted to narrow cast cable and premium cable like UPN, CW, BET, and HBO. Because of this, public exposure to minorities through television is limited to either negative stereotypical images that are most popular through reality television or most available in network news broadcasts or images are not available at all. The few positive images of ethnic minorities that do exist on television must often be sought out and are simply outweighed by the prevalence of negative images. Perhaps it is up to consumers to change these trends by demanding engaging characters and new stories that portray all ethnicities more positively. But television is a ratings-driven industry and its controversy and negative, often stereotype-reinforcing imagery continue to bring in consumers and advertisers. These trends are likely to continue into the next eras of television, just as it had since the first. <laughs>